He was the most successful politician of his generation. The man who at 45 became the youngest Taoiseach ever. He was close to some of the world's most powerful leaders, but was still able to have an odd drink in his local. He was on good terms with uber-rich developers and adored in his Dublin Central constituency, where he topped the poll in every general election from 1981 to 2007. His hard work was legendary. It was like Rambo territory, you know, running against the Hearn in any election because he had the resources of 100 personnel uh, and there seemed to be an abundance of money in relation to posters and that, so to try and match that and keep up with it, he was a machine. The Hearn machine has had a difficult few years, but the wheels finally came off with today's tribunal report. He, he moves from being sort of the uh, the, the controversial former Taoiseach uh, to being the disgraced former Taoiseach. A tribunal set up by the Oireachtas has found that he engaged in widespread deception of them, that he received money uh, that he would not account for truthfully. I think the report of the tribunal will be more damaging to Bertie O'Hearn in terms of history than the report of the Moriarty Tribunal to Charlie Hawhey for this one reason. Bertie Ahern was at the height of his career when the tribunal was going on, when he was hauled before the tribunal and required under oath to tell the truth. And it seemed that he had difficulty in telling the truth. But will that tarnish his international image? Since stepping down as Taoiseach, he has carved out a role as a jet-setting elder statesman, a man who brought peace and economic good times to Ireland. He has been a regular visitor to China with Irish businessmen. He is also frequently hired as a highly paid speaker with an organisation called the Washington Speakers Bureau. It's a bureau that, that allows um, people who want uh, speakers uh, celebrity speakers or well-known speakers or people who've had, held very high positions to hire such people and have them come to your event and, and, uh, and create interest for your guests at the event. So he goes as a former Prime Minister and as somebody who negotiated the Good Friday Peace Agreement and uh, people, uh, he gets very well paid for these trips. Just how well paid is confidential, but Primetime can reveal that for a Bertie Ahern speech the Bureau charges 50,000 US dollars or 38,000 euro, plus first-class travel and hotel expenses for two people. And for speeches outside Europe and the US, the cost is $70,000 plus expenses. He made seven such speeches in 2009 and 2010. We obtained a copy of a speech he gave to business people in Honduras in February 2009, one month after Anglo-Irish Bank was nationalised. Uh, I led a country through uh, 11 years of unprecedented economic growth and today I'd like to uh, share my thoughts with you on the challenges faced by the uh, global economy and I will explain how Ireland as a nation uh, has developed a successful and lasting collaborative domestic and international uh, social uh, and economic model. I'm hugely optimistic about the, about the future of our economy, uh, the underlying strengths but of our manufacturing our financial services of our agri-food sectors are real and enduring. In the speech, Mr Ahern emphasised personal traits necessary for effective leadership. You always have to be honest with yourself in life. Uh, you always have to be honest if you ever want to achieve something. And sometimes when you look in the mirror, it's not nice to be honest to yourself because you get a fright and you don't like what you see in the mirror. If you tell half-truths, if you conceal the facts, if you distort the reality, if you paint the picture that isn't the reality, then you fool yourself, you fool your people. The 72-minute speech and question and answer session cost his hosts $1,000 per minute. I think Bertie Hearn is doing very well uh, from the point of, point of view of the, the average uh, person in Ireland, partly because uh, during his term in office he increased the, uh, the paying conditions for, for, for ministers and Taoiseach, so he's got a very good pension. 
On top of private income, he also gets over €2,800 per week from his TD and ministerial pensions. All in and they're off. Money may be a comfort now, but it was also money that led to his downfall when he was unable to explain the sources of large sums of cash. He offered famously uh, the explanation that he had won some money uh, on the horses to account for, uh, for one lodgement. The tribunal has rejected that. To try and convince people that he was in one of the horses. As long as I've known Bertie, I never, never, never saw him in a betting shop in my life. I don't think he knows anything about horses, other than what he sees, and he knows the shape and make of them, but I wouldn't think he knows much about the running or racing and things like that. So to say that he's involved in winning big money in races, I find that very hard to believe. Some of Bertie Ahern's loyal lieutenants gave evidence at the tribunal. Former Secretary Gráinne Carruth testified repeatedly that she had not handled large amounts of sterling for Mr Ahern, before admitting after intense questioning that she must have done. It wasn't so much that the truth was actually nailed in her testimony. It was that he would do that to a young mother who had served him loyally and faithfully. The plaintiveness of her appeal to the judge, I just want to go home. I just want to go home to my family. It was quite heartbreaking on a human level to see that. I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back with the electorate and with the public. When they saw her cry on television and sort of isolated and left alone to carry a can, uh, I think that was, the, that was the crucifixion. Time will tell how much the image of a distraught former secretary and today's damning findings will affect the Bertie Ahern legacy. I'd say he's very shocked by what's happened. I haven't spoken with him. But certainly it's a huge bro blow to his legacy and I suppose to his personal pride. Prime ministers at that level, anyone at that level, you know, wants to leave a legacy. You know, and a good legacy. They want to be remembered. That goes with the territory, whether you're President of America or just the Taoiseach of Ireland. And unfortunately now people will tend to remember that rather than the, the successes he had.